Welcome back to um, Bruce's investing series. Today um, we'll be going over a, another stock that just announced earnings today, and this is a great dividend stock. Before I I uh, dive dive deep into what do the financials explain why this is a good dividend stock, let's go over Procter and Gamble's brands. So they have brands such as you know baby care products, uh, fabric care. Family care here, paper towels, toilet paper, feminine products, grooming, hairstyle, home care, oral care, such as like toothbrush and mouthwash and things like that. Other personal health care products. So overall, Procter Gamble has some of the most diversified uh, brands and products. I can guarantee you, in your house or your apartment, you have at least one product from Procter Gamble. That could be your, your paper towel to your toothbrush or your shampoo. Now let's dive deep into uh, Procter Gamble's financials. Procter Gamble announced their earnings today for their for their quarter one financials. They have uh, they announced an EPS of dollar twenty six per share. That's a twelve point five percent increase from year over year basis. And um, I suspect that um, some of the jumps in earnings per share is, is probably due to you know last year in March in twenty twenty, at the beginning of the stay at home order, people were buying up a lot of like toilet papers and uh, paper towels and shampoos. Basically, people are just buying things left and right I believe it has some kind of uh, effect from that now let's dive down to Procter Gamble's uh, balance sheet to see the financial health Procter Gamble's current ratio it's trading at a 0.7 right and um, how you calculate the current ratio is you take the current asset 22608 divided by the current liabilities of 32016. It gives you a current ratio of 0 0.7, but I don't see this as a huge concern for a company like Procter & Gamble, because if you look at here, 26% of this sales, Procter & Gamble sales are on receivables. What that means is they're waiting to collect that money within 12 months. So therefore, the current ratio below one for a company like this, it's not a massive concern. But what makes um, Park Bank Gamble uh, somewhat stand out is that their total asset to total ratio, total asset to total liability, it's at 1.67. So that's a that's a good indicator. This company has a strong financial health. And if you look at the uh, the payout ratio for the dividend so at the most recent quarter is only 49.8 percent so therefore they're not overpaying they can they, they still have some room to grow that dividend gradually and under, under here majority of Procter and gamble sales from the fabric care home care and baby care these account for over 10 percent of the sales and if you look at here, beauty products actually had an uh, increase in earning on a year-over-year -year basis, which is amazing. Even though, which is amazing because with with um with the economy still somewhat shut down and uh, somewhat restricted, you know, people might not have a lot of need for beauty products, and yet Procter and Gamble still still able to generate a lot of sales, which is awesome. Grooming product, I mean, slightly increasing sales. Healthcare, slightly decreasing sales. Not nothing huge concerning. Fabric home care goes up a lot, but but overall, the company is is generating more money than than the year before. That that's what really matters here. And let's go into why why um 
I like Procter & Gamble as a uh, dividend stock. Let's go to Seeking Alpha. Procter Gamble. Yeah. So right now it's it's getting a yield of two point three two percent, three point six, three dollars and sixteen cents per share in annual dividend, only paying fifty five point six nine percent of of their uh, payout ratio, which is sustainable. Their five year growth rate is only three point five nine. It's okay, but if you look at the dividend growth, they've been growing their dividend for sixty four consecutive years. That's um, that's the uh, dividend aristocrat uh, status. Right now, Procter & Gamble is trading at a very low P, a uh, very low um, dividend yield. It's because the stock price actually had a uh, had a somewhat of a monster run. If you look at here, stock has increased 9.56% a year. The stock in the past five years has increased 64.04%. Um, whenever the stock, problem again is this, whenever the stock falls, you, you want it, you want to buy it because no matter how bad, how good the economy is, problem again can always generate inconsistent cash flow. Because if you, because you need a majority of the product, you know, to live your daily life. Now let's hop over to Yahoo Finance to see some more information on valuation. Procter Gamble has a beta of below one, which means that this stock is less volatile than the overall market. So if you're like a uh, if you if you are sensitive to volatility, this stock is not bad to have in portfolio because because again, it the stock up, stocks move slower than the overall market, therefore it doesn't swing up and down wildly like Tesla in my, in your uh, portfolio. It is trading right now at a PE ratio twenty six. I mean, it is somewhat richly traded traded right now. The dividend yield is is kind of low at two point five five percent. But if this, I can actually see Procter & Gamble stock might tumble at some time down the road because right now people are somewhat fearing about the economy and um, Procter & Gamble is more of a defensive stock because whenever um, there's a fear of recession, stocks like Procter & Gamble, Johnson Johnson, Walmart, Coca-Cola, Pepsi tend to perform really well during those times. And so... Procter & Gamble stock is, whenever you see a dip, it is a good idea to take a look at it and possibly buy the stock because when this stock falls enough, it will bounce back quick, quicker than you think. You know, let's expect the stock, you know, again, that this is a 100 billion plus company. And let's expect this company to uh, increase their, their sales for 2021 to 6.2%, 3.3% in the future. Pretty realistic expectation for a company like this. I can see um, Procter and Gamble continue to again. If you look, go back over here. If you go back over here, if you go back over here, beauty over here. It's where they generated, generated um, a, dec a second, a decent chunk of their uh, their money. So with the economy open up, or reopen back up to you know full capacity, sometime down the road, I can see a lot more people will be buying out a lot of the beauty products because you know when people are going out more, they need makeup, they need more you know 
hair product to make the hair look good. So a 6.2% increase in sale. This expectation is pretty realistic. And let's look at the valuation. It's trading in 4P, 22.73. Again, it is somewhat of a uh, richly valued trade at the moment, but Parkman Gamble, again, has been paying a dividend, you know, growing the dividend for 64 years. This company will always generate cash flow, no matter how good, how bad the economy is. In my opinion, this stock is a good stock to have, to have your portfolio. It's a good stock to develop, it. let's say, a... Um, a consistent buying plan for it like this stock is um it's very good for building a retirement portfolio and um if you're a retired individual this stock could also be good for uh for people who wants to generate some you know retirement income when they're not working and uh, just to wrap up my video why i like Procter and gamble Procter and gamble is a recession proof business they can generate consistent cash flow no matter what it what, what the economy is their dividend is, is uh, reliable, it's not unsustainable, and um, lastly, it's very good for the long term. If you, I actually have plans to buy the stock on the monthly plan for the, for, the, for the next 40 years or more. That's how much I like this company. That's it for the, uh, for the video, and um, if you like this content, please subscribe for more future content.